Uh, I am Sean. Um, I am employed here at Bruce. I've actually worked here on and off for like a decade, decade and a half now. Um, the reason we're all here today is not only for yoga, but we're also raising money for conservation. Uh, there's a foundation down in Panama called, called the El Baje Amphibian Conservation Center. Um, I'm wearing their shirt right now. I was able to volunteer there last year for a month. Um, they do some amazing work. They're a nonprofit. It's run by a husband and wife and their little son. And they literally do all the work that goes into this foundation, which basically is breeding amphibians that have been extinct in the wild or close to extinction and getting them ready to be re-released back up the wild. They're literally doing work that nobody else on the planet is really doing. Um, Eduardo, who was one of the, the founders of it, basically noticed that the amphibians in his local area where he liked to hike were on a huge decline because of chytrid fungus, and he decided that he was actively going to be the one to do something about it. The government hadn't stepped in yet, zoos hadn't stepped yet or anything. So he went out every night and he just started collecting as many frogs and salamanders as he could, started setting up in tanks and started breeding them. Well, within a year or two of him doing that, Panama saw a 90% decrease in, an, in its amphibian population. Uh, literally, nine out of 10 species went extinct or were close to extinction. So by him stepping up and doing this, he was able to save all these animals for future generations. The main one that they focus on is the Panamanian golden frog. It's a national symbol of Panama. It's a symbol of good luck. And it is in the culture completely ingrained all throughout Panama. You can't go anywhere without seeing a golden frog on somebody's bus or on the side of their building or on good luck charms. Uh, this animal means everything to the people and their culture. And because of what Eduardo and his wife Heidi have done, they preserve it for future generations. But because they are a nonprofit and because we're now in COVID, they haven't been able to get the amount of funding that they normally would. Normally they rely on people coming through their organization and taking tours. Uh, they recently had a ship in their government. The government was supposed to give them X amount of dollars and then backed out of it. So whatever money we raise here today, whatever money we've been raising at the front counter or that we do online, literally goes directly to their conservation to help out. Um, so I really appreciate everybody showing up today. Um, at the end, we can take some more donations. I'll um, also do an animal presentation with some of the animals from the zoo, or sorry, from the, uh, the store. And obviously, if you've got questions about anything, you can just come up and ask me. So I will hand this over to Kirby. So if you guys haven't noticed, story time is going to be live today, and we're going to be doing yeah. yoga for frogs. Yoga in a barn. I so do yoga. we're going to be doing yoga. And we don't have this is the help with the El Baje Amphibian Conservation Center, and this is also um, part of our so story yeah, time. I'm so and I feel like I we'll go ahead and get started. I didn't introduce my family. This is my dad, Rick, with the beard, and that's my mom back there. And these are our amazing employees, Kennedy and Emily, and we own Cruise Pets. And I'm super excited because I want this to kind of be planting the seed of a lot more conservation yoga to come. Um, I started yoga training in 2007 and I've taught ever since and really my dream was to one day teach here <laughs> and to be able to offer kids animal yoga, which I usually teach a lot, but I haven't been able to this summer. So I thought how cool to collaborate with Sean and raise money for conservation. So 100% of what you donate will go to conservation and we will do lots more Sunday night parking lot yoga. So I need those of you who are really regular customers to help me spread the word. Right. So for me growing up in a pet store, I've been surrounded by animals my whole life. I've seen the beautiful bond that comes from human and animals coming together. Um, and whatever we can do to advocate for animals is so important. So let's have fun and move a bit. And uh, we will do donations at the end after the animals. I do want to emphasize that there is absolutely zero expectation of how you move on your map. This is your practice. So if you want to simply lay down and do nothing, that is your yoga. So feel free to do that. With that said, we're going to follow our teacher who's already in our first pose. Is it Evie? 
BB. I thought it was BB. Okay. That is awesome. Yeah. Yep, crisscross applesauce. Do you do tortoise pose? Oh, you just wait, girlfriend. We have a tortoise at the end. You'll see. You'll see. Okay. All right. So we're going to start in any comfortable seat that works for you. So however you can cross at the ankles, whatever makes sense, make sure to modify if that doesn't feel good. But we want to find a nice, comfortable cross-legged position and then just turn our palms to face up on our knees. Let's take a nice full inhalation in through the nose, and then a nice exhale out through the mouth, and just start to tune into all of the sensations around you. Where your mind goes, your energy flows, so see if you can bring your awareness into that waterfall over to the side. Find that single focus of drawing your attention into the release and the softening that comes with tuning into that water element. Take another full inhale, and as you do so, really lengthen up through your spine, draw length through the pit of your belly. And either keeping your eyes closed or opening them, start to inhale, lengthen your arms up and overhead, feel the back of the rib cage lengthen, let your neck softly relax. And then just interlace your fingers, send your palms up towards the sky. A little soft bend in your elbows. And root down strongly through your sit bones. Establish that strong base. Just imagine this line from your sit bones all the way to the core of the earth. Anchor yourself here. Unmoving, still, strong. Nothing can shake you. Softly let your hands just relax back behind your head. Draw your chin into your chest. Draw your elbows towards one another. Just hug gently. Relaxing your shoulders. Inhale, you're going to softly start to lift your chest up, start to open your eyes, lift your gaze, lift your heart, relax your shoulders, and breathe. Expand through your chest. We go through the world, our shoulders closed off, walls up, guarded. See if you can breathe into your heart, allowing it to open. Breathe into your chest, welcoming unconditional love for the self. Take one more deep breath in and then exhale softly, drawing it down, chin into the chest. From here, gently just release the hands. Switch the cross of your ankles to just balance out the hips. And then inhale, circle up through your arms again. Time, let's do a little bit of nerve flossing. So reach your arms out to the side. Spread your fingers nice and wide. Gently turn your right fingertips down as you draw your right ear to your right shoulder. And take a few gentle breaths, and with each exhalation, let your shoulders just glide down your back body. Switch it out. Inhale, draw your head back to center. Just point your right fingertips down. Draw your left ear to your left shoulder. Providing some myofascial release. This kind of spider like webbing that goes through our whole body, encapsulating our organs, our muscles, our tissues, and just lengthening the space. 
From here, bring it back to center. Take your arms and just cross them, one elbow over the other. Maybe the palms come together, together. maybe the tops of the hands softly touch. And then three inhales and exhales. You're gonna lift and lengthen up. And then exhale, softly lower down. Inhale, softly lift and lengthen up. Pull from the pit of your belly all the way up through your fingertips. Exhale, soften. And then one more time. See if you can really anchor your awareness into your upper back. Gently relax it down and switch opposite arms. Just reach it out, lengthen from your heart to your fingertips and then softly find an opposite bind here. Shoulders drop down on the exhale. Letting the weight of the world roll off of your shoulders and then bringing your awareness to the earth beneath you. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. And then one more time. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Gently release your arms. From here, we're going to take our yoga block. This is actually a little tip I got when I did a myofascial release training in California. This was wonderful for your neck. It's really good to do, especially now, because we're always on our phones looking down. Fun fact, that puts 60 pounds of pressure on your neck. So this is gonna kind of counterpose that work. So you're gonna take that block, you're gonna place the bottom ridge at the base of your skull. Just let your feet softly rest on your mat. If you'd like to bring the feet wider than your hips, let your knees fall in towards one another. Place your hands on your belly. Find that deep diaphragmatic breath. So inhale, the belly fills up. Press into your hands. Exhale, feel your navel draw to your spine as you empty out. Again, inhale, keeping the shoulders light. Fill your belly. Exhale, empty all the way up. Keeping that deep diaphragmatic breathing, slowly start to turn your head side to side, just massaging this bottom ridge. I spend so much time being human doing. Just allow yourself to be during this class. Allow yourself to relax. Those muscles, ligaments, bones, let everything fall soft. Let your eyelids get softer. Relax the tongue down from the roof of your mouth. distraction of the busyness, the traffic, and back into your breath. And gently turn your head side to side two more times, relaxing your shoulders. back to center. Softly lift your head up off of the block. Just release it off to the side. Hug your knees into your chest. Place your hands softly on your knees. And then just rock the knees side to side. Just relaxing through your low back. Massaging that sacrum. The center point between this bottom body and this upper body. We ask so much. Softly, side to side. And then from here, bring the knees back to center. Plant your palms down alongside your hips and then gently lengthen your legs up towards the sky. 
Keep a soft micro bend in the knees and then press up through the heels as you draw the toes towards the nose. Relax out through your shoulders. Take a deep breath in, fill the belly. Exhale, high and surrender out. Letting go, trusting you're exactly where you're meant to be. From here, point your toes up towards the sky, lengthen the tops of the feet. And then press out through the heels, travel the toes towards the nose. And a few more times, pointing those toes up towards the sky. And then pressing out through the heels, toes towards the nose. One more press and lengthen. And press out through the heels. Softly draw those knees back into the chest. Roll over towards your right side into the fetal position. And then use your hands to help you up, eventually coming to all fours. So from here, just a little bit of extension and flexion of the spine. So let's inhale, lift our gaze, lift our heart, drop forward and up. And then exhale, round it out. Draw your chin into your chest and really lengthen through the spine. Inhale, let your gaze lift, feel your heart follow. And then exhale, round it out, belly to spine. Inviting movement, breath, space. Inhale, lift your gaze, lift your heart. This time you're gonna transition into down dog. So you're gonna tuck your toes. From here, you're gonna lift up and back through your hips, pressing strong, stable, and even through both hands. From here, just start to walk your feet in place, softly lengthening along the hamstrings. Let your head hang heavy. Shake it side to side a few times, yes or no, and just let that head get below the heart. Let go of that over analytical mind and just find some softness. And then when it feels right to you, bring your knees down and find child's pose. Or as I was telling Evie, tortoise pose. <laughs> so you're gonna bring your knees down, you're gonna untuck your toes and then soften back into child's pose. And breathe. Notice your mind's response to the idea of surrender. See if you can find the strength in release and letting go. Making space. Take one more deep breath in. Feel the rib cage expand. Exhale, sigh it out. From here, slowly, let's start to transition into our standing posture. So come back to all fours. Begin to tuck your toes, lift your hips, anchor back into downward facing dog. From here, you can either step your right foot forward between your hands and then the left. Or you can take these small little steps, eventually getting your feet up to your hands. Find a soft bend in your knees. Anchor your hands on your upper thighs. And then grow your spine forward as you lengthen forward through the heart. The back of your neck be long. Feel the strength in your belly. And then press strongly down through your feet. Keep your belly engaged. And then inhale, draw it all the way up and overhead as you lengthen. Interlace your fingers, send your palms skyward, root down through your feet, soft bend in your knees, and then softly anchor over to the right, shoulders relax. Breathing into that left side body, just imagine filling up. And then engage your belly, inhale, bring it back to center, and then over to the left. Lift 
lift your belly nice and tall on the inhale and then exhale softly surrender to the left making space to breathe inhale drop back to center steady your hands on your hips and then draw your weight over into your left foot right down through the ball of the big toe over into the pinky toe spread your toes nice and wide anchor and then find your version of tree pose. So option one, placing the arch of the foot on the ankle. Option two, placing it on the shin. Option three, drawing that foot into that left inner upper thigh. And think of balance. So as you anchor the foot into the leg, press the leg back into the foot. Kind of steady your gaze on a single point and rebound that stillness back into your body. And the beauty of balance is that we can't have it without imbalance. So embracing the flows, the changes, the falls, coming back to center. And you reach your arms up and overhead, play with it, let your belly grow tall. At any point, come out, honor what you need today. One more deep breath in here. Slowly draw that knee back to center and then place it down on your mat. From here, scoop your arms down and then inhale back up and around as you lift your gaze. Anchor your hands back behind you. Find a soft clasp and interlace down near your tailbone. Draw your shoulder blades together. And then three breaths. Soft lift of your gaze. Expand into your heart. Opening of each breath. You think of conservation. Also think of conservation of energy. And we let go of hate, doubt, anger, fear. And then what do we fill up with? Really inhale, bring it back to center. Reach your arms up and around, breathe tall. And softly anchor your hands down to your hips. Switch it out. So switch into that right foot. And then start to find your tree pose on the opposite side. Any point along the way. That standing leg be nice and strong, lifting the knees.
inside of the tent so you're not saying, hey, Cedar Street. We're going to just fold forward. That was a comment on the yoga page. <laughs> We're going to fold forward. Maybe the hands or fingertips come down to the mat. Maybe the fingertips onto the shins. Maybe hands onto the yoga block. How much release can you find here? Let the head hang heavy. From here, softly lift your forehead up from the mat. Walk your hands over to the right side. Lengthen through your left side ribcage. Breathe into it. center and then walk over to the opposite side of your mat. Mm -hmm. 
And then from here, gently walk it back to center. Let's bend down, we're facing dog again. Come up to all fours, tuck your toes, lift your hips. Pressing strong and even down into the mat. So you're gonna stand the left foot, lift your right leg up and back behind you. You're gonna level off the hips, dropping that right hip down square with the left. Maybe a soft bend in your left knee, head hangs heavy. Press your mat, lengthen the mat away, feel your spine lengthen. Inhale here, exhale, soften that foot down. Opposite side, lift and lengthen your left foot up and back. Squaring off your hips, feeling strong in your body, press and lengthen. Inhale, breathe and reach. Exhale, place it down. From here, just bring your knees down to your mat. You're gonna come onto your right side and then eventually just come to a seated space facing the front of your mat. From here, option to just come all the way so that you're laying down, or if you wanna do a little bit of core work, feel free to keep your feet planted on your mat. And then as slow as you can go, rolling down piece at a time until eventually you come all the way down and then reach your arms up and overhead. From here, step your feet in so that your heels come towards the sit bones. Bring your knees, frontal hip distance wide. And then extend your arms back up and over. Bring your palms next to your hips. Take a deep breath in. Fill your chest. Fill your heart. Exhale. Tie out. Belly to spine. From here, press through your feet. You're going to start to lift your tailbone and your low back from the mat. You do this. See if you can relax through your glutes. Feel the inner and outer thighs stabilizing your posture, taking that pressure off of your low back. Breathing nice and full. Take three deep breaths here. Filling the belly as you rise. Exhale, emptying the belly as you let go. Yes, maybe yawn your arms out. Let your knees soften over to the right as you're 
palms to face up on your knees. Allow your eyes to gently close.
Yep, he's got those big, big legs, almost like an elephant's legs, that help him truck around on that big, heavy body. Yep. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think the difference might be between him and a turtle? He's not a turtle. we call him a tortoise. Oh yeah, I forgot. Well, where, where do you normally see a turtle? In the water. So where do you think you see a tortoise? On that, that's right. That's literally how we tell the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. Most turtles are going to be in the water, most tortoises on land. Oh, he can go in the water, and he sometimes he likes to swim around, but that's not where he likes to live. And sometimes we have turtles that are in between. We have box turtles. Box turtles have two big, thick, heavy legs like he has, but then two slightly wet legs so he can get around in the water. In nature, there's always a loophole. Nothing is ever constant. There's always something that's different than everything else. So while Fred's wandering, I'll bring out our other friend then. This is Sue. Sue is called a ball python. Or sometimes, sometimes they're actually called royal pythons because that's what their Latin name means. And they got that name because it said that Cleopatra used to wear these guys as ornaments. So she would wrap them around her wrist and they would be bracelets. Or sometimes she would wrap them around her neck and they would be necklaces. That's how they got the name royal python. We call them ball pythons because when they get scared, they curl up into a ball and hide their head. Yeah. Can you imagine being a snake this big and scaring people? And then every time you get scared, you just hide your head face. And you think that because you can't see anything, they can't see you. That's just what a royal python does. So, so like snake frosting. Yeah. No, I, th I think that's a good way. And then, and then he his head, and then he looks like a ball. A weird I think so. In fact, the coloring and all that pattern actually helps him blend in with both rocks yeah. and grasses where he lives. That's what I meant. That's what you meant. Know what that's called? Camouflage. Yeah. That's right. There's all kinds of different camouflage. My dad, he used to, before he was a dad, he used to, he used to go hunting. And we were camping once, and there was this guy, and I go, and then it scared me so bad, and I just ran to walk down and was really like, I, I think you should be hosting this. You tell the greatest stories. Way better than my stories. That's what I was just telling you. That's how the snake basically knows who we are. It's like saying hello. 
Every time the snake flips its tongue, it's, it's detecting who's around us and what's going on. And that's how also it hunts for its food. And then when it, when it grabs a hold of its food, its jaw can open really, really wide, and the skin around its mouth and neck are very stretchy, kind of like on our elbows. See how that's all stretchy? Do it. Do it yourself. Look how stretchy that is. That's how the skin around the snake's head is built. So when this snake hunts, instead of eating something that's bite size, it's going to eat something as big around as it is at the thickest point. So that big around. The neck is that big. The body is that big. So imagine it's Thanksgiving Day, and you see the big turkey sitting on the table, and you're really, really hungry. Now imagine you can open your jaw up down to the bottom of your chest, and you take the whole turkey and shove it in your mouth, and you swallow it in one big bite. Dude, what about the bones? Bones and all. It could even still have the feathers on it, and the snake would eat it that way. And then you wouldn't have to eat again until Easter. That's what it's like being a snake. I used to handle rattlesnakes at my old job all the time. Rattlesnakes are far. They're some of my favorites. I like them just because they don't. Did you know that snakes around here that aren't venomous do the same thing? So if they rattle their tail against leaves, it makes them sound like a rattlesnake, and then predators will leave them alone. Would you like a chance to see what Sue feels like? I gotta ask you though, do you think Sue is slimy? No. I Who here thinks snakes are slimy? Thankfully no one. Snakes are actually very, very dry. Snakes to me feel like a basketball. They're dry but they have a lot of grip. Probably the best ambassador snake we could ever ask for. You know, I don't know exactly how old Sue is. I think around seven or eight. And we keep so it's actually a boy. It's a boy named Sue. So sometimes you've heard me say she, and sometimes you've heard me say he. And it's because when I'm saying Sue, I instantly think girl, but I shouldn't think that because anybody can have any type of name, and it doesn't really matter. I see Fred's making his rounds and saying hello. Well, Sue's been basking under some warm heat lights because since uh, he comes from Africa, he likes basking spots around 90 or 95 degrees, so we keep the general cage temperature in the 80s. So when I pulled Sue out, I was sitting under his nice warm basking area and then wondered why the heck I was taking him out. So, do we have any last questions about any of the animals? Do you have any questions about evac and about the conservation stuff that we're doing? We got pictures of the frogs that we're taking care of right up here. towards feeding their frogs. It also goes towards keeping their lights on. Um, 
I will talk briefly about what it was like being down there. It was completely surreal. Um, I think as Americans, we have this idea of what we think foreign countries are like, and really they're not that different than we are. Um, going through the city, they were building skyscrapers left and right. I mean, there's like five areas that look like Chicago. But in the middle of it, it's people who don't have running water or electricity. Or you see people just throwing garbage out. And it's, so when you go to big cities in the United States, you kind of see something very similar. But where we were was out in the mountainside. It was a five hour drive to get to where we were going. And El Baje is literally in the me middle of a crater that's like, I think, five miles in diameter. And so all around us, every morning I woke up, it was just mountains. And it's just pure green. And they go up like 2,000 meters. And no matter what you're looking at, if you took out like a pair of binoculars, you'd realize a tree that you're looking at that you thought was small was actually like a 300 foot tall tree. And you try walking through and it's so dense you can't walk off of any of the paths. It's just sheer walls of green, of vines and plants and flowers. And they have square trees there, which the biggest square tree we came across was at least the width of this uh, whole canopy. And then the root systems are raised up above the ground and they were going out 60 or 70 feet and were about 12 to 15 feet tall. So it's like walking into Jurassic Park. Like you don't think these things are real until you get there. The one tree that we found was the biggest actually had the river running underneath of it. It was so large. Um, when we were out there, we barely found any amphibians. We, we found like three frogs and one salamander. And Eduardo told us that about 15 years ago, you wouldn't be able to step one foot without literally frogs and toads scattering everywhere. He would wake up at three o'clock in the morning to golden frogs covered in his tent and all over in the front. And in a matter of two years, all of them disappeared. And it's because of one fungus. So the work that like they're doing right now and the conservation that you guys are helping with today is literally ensuring that these animals are going to survive. Um, and it's really, really, one surreal be in the jungle, but then to go to like their camp and see that they just have these um, basically shipping containers just full of frogs that are all breeding, and they just keep getting generation after generation going. So it's awesome to be able to help out with it. You guys got the help. Well, put the snake on the ground. It's probably going to slither away. Yeah. I mean. I mean, if I just picked you up and put you on the ground someplace, are you just going to stay there, or are you going to wander away? Tell me to go to my home with my mom and me. Yeah, well, Sue wants to do the same thing. Sue's not just going to stay there. Yeah, she's got to go find a safe place to stay for the night. Where is she? She's in her place where she lives, and here? But this isn't where she lives. She lives in there. She's got to find a way inside. Okay, well, maybe if I put her on the floor in there, she might go back to where she lives. Who knows? I'm not going to experiment with that, though. I'm, I think I'm just going to put her right back in her home. All right, well, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And thank you, everybody, for watching the live yoga for conservation. Um, again, this is a little bit different than our normal story time, but figured, what the heck, let's change it up a little bit. Um, if you feel like donating to EVAC, um, you can look them up on Facebook. There's a PayPal that you can send everything to. And as I was mentioning in my talks there, all the donations you give to them go directly towards helping out the conservation. So, thank you.